Thank you. So hi everyone, my name is Jan and first of all thank you for organizing this for this great event. It's my big pleasure to be here because I love Berlin. So um, and today I want to talk about multi-channel commerce, multi-channel sales because I believe that it's the future of e-commerce plus data. And so, oh maybe the, I forgot a clip, thanks. First, short introduction of myself, you know, as I mentioned, I'm founder and CEO of Monkey Data, but I have more than seven years of background in e-commerce. I found a digital agency, then I have my free online stores, and thanks God that I had these online stores because I realized with my two co-founders that there is a big problem with data analytics in small and medium-sized stores all over the world. It means more than 40 million stores all over the world have problem with data. So we've, we realized to found it, uh, Monkey Data, which uh, help you to analyze all data in one place and uh, help you to improve your business. And right now, we, you know, we, have, we are two years on the market and we start in Czech Republic, where right now we have offices in, in Prague, in Berlin, and uh, next month we will open an office in Austin, Texas, because a lot of customers are in US and, US and in Canada. And so if you want uh, to try Monkey Data, we got a booth on C8, so meet us there and we will help you. Okay. It was sh short sales pitch, and now, why I believe that uh, multi-channel commerce is the future? Because of this, you know, because today's digital customer is practically everywhere. So having your product in and as many places is key strategy. What is multi-channel commerce? First question: How many of you guys have your own online store? Few of you. Okay. So that's good because I think there's a huge opportunity to think about your online business. So it's very simple. It's all channels why your customers can buy your products. It's super simple. And you, they can buy products via online store, via POS, via some physical store, via social media platforms, marketplaces, or, or via mobile app. And today I want to talk about especially the two segments. The first one is the social media platforms, and second is the marketplaces. And I show you how to use them and why are important to use these channels for growing with your online business. First, if you have a store and you realize, that, okay, I want to be a multi-channel seller, first of all, you have to think about if you are ready, if you are fit for, be, for being the multi-channel seller. And how to do that? First of all, you have to think about a customer. You have to know your customers very well. Who are they? What, what is, what's the social profile of a customer? What's the gender? What's their hobbies? You know, what's their purchase circumstances? And so on. And if you realize, okay, my customers are everywhere, they are ready to, to, you know, to buy my, buy my, buy my uh, products and services via these uh, channels, then you have to think about a product. Because for example, if you're selling your product in local market, it's okay with logistics, for example. But if you sell your products into abroad, you have to think about the size, the weights of the packages. If your logistic company is, is able to deliver the product to the right place in the right time. And after that, if you make a research and say, okay, I'm ready, I'm fit, I want to try it, you have to think about the money. Because it's not so cheap. It's also not so expensive, but it's not so cheap. So think about the money and invest some budget in, into you know, multi-channel sales. And if you want to, if you, if you need help, you know, ask some professional agencies or services to help you with that. It's, it's really crucial. And it's a, my first advice for you. Okay, first segment, mar marketplaces. I want to talk about these three marketplaces, eBay, Amazon, and Etsy. First, why to use them? First main you know, reason is that's a huge market for you. More than 50% customers in Germany using marketplaces for buying products online. Rest of them, online stores. So if you have online store and you don't use, you don't use eBay, Amazon, you're losing 50% of market, and that's huge. And the same is in the US, you know. It's around 25%, it's, it's, it's a huge revenue for you. So that's the first main reason. Second reason is that Amazon is practically like Google for products, because more than 50% of all product searches starts on Amazon. And it doesn't matter if at the end your customers will buy a product in a store, but they will find you in Amazon. More than 50% customers using this. So it's very, very important. Then confidence. It's a, Amazon is a great you know, opportunity or eBay or any other marketplace for confidence because when you have a new store, imagine that, you have a store, unknown brand, 
you have very small budget for investing in PR, but, and you have definitely no confidence in your customers. But if you are a seller on Amazon, Amazon will give you their brand, they, they name, you know, for, for, and they give you the, the confidence. And it's a huge you know, advantage against your competitors. And last but not least, Amazon and any other marketplace is a, is a great tool how to, you know, how to find the fact if you are ready, if your product are ready for, for expansion. So if you want to expand and you, you will use first Amazon, it's very cheap and it's a very easy way how to, you know, how to see the opportunity in another market. This is really interesting because there is a lot of differences in marketing on marketplaces and in online store. If you have an online store, you have, this is a, the left one is a typical you know, marketing mix for online store. You have to think about a product, your price, you have to hire the people, you have to open your own store, and you have to think about your promotion. Everything you have to do by yourself or with the agency. But if you're using, let's say, Amazon, you have to think only about the product and price because everything else is on Amazon. You, know, you have to think about the place, you have to think about the promotion, it's a marketplace, and you have to think about the people. There are another marketing differences that there are between marketplaces and online store. You will no use for newsletters, remarketing, UX, or copywriting. Everything you know is ready, and you will use differently SEO because you can set up. You have to set up the account. You know, it's, but it's not the same like you know set up your your store for let's say Google search. You will use different kind of PPC because Amazon, for example, have their own Amazon ads. And at the end, the most crucial thing is the review. You know, it's all it's based on reviews. So you have to think about it, how to set up the process to get more reviews. You have to think about the customer care. You have to think about your, you know, delivering logistics and so on. Everything is super crucial for, for reviews. And some rules for Amazon. Amazon, and Amazon is not for everyone, you know. You have to, you need to have good in stock because Amazon is, is super, how to say, you know, for them it's a super important delivering, you know, in, you have to deliver the product in less than three days. It's super, you know, super important. And for example, my friend have, have online store, uh, they're using Amazon, and 99% of, of year they deliver the products in one or two days. But you know, in holiday season and Christmas, they realize, okay, we have a, you know, really a lot of a lot of new orders, and we will have a problem with with, with logistics. So they sent all the Amazon users, all, all the customers, before the holidays. Hey guys, we will need two more days. All these customers were okay with that, but Amazon said, okay guys, it's more than three days, and then put them away from the top ten you know positions in the list of uh, of their category, and it was like 90 percent you know minus of of the revenue. It was like that for them. And this is the second rule, you know, it's a, because Amazon is unlimited authority. You have, to, you, you have to know that, you know. They can do everything. They can do everything. But if you are, if you are as I mentioned, if you are good in stock, you, you are good margins because it's super, let's say, pressure on price on Amazon, you'll be good. Also, another rule is brand suppression, you know. As I mentioned, it's a very good for confidence because you're using Amazon as a brand, but your brand is not on top position. Some tips for eBay. I will say it's the same like on Amazon, but eBay is much more, let's say, on, uh, they, they, they push much on photos or items, you know, item specifics and so on. And I have, here are the mistakes, you don't have to read it, I, can, I, can, I will share the presentation, after, uh, share the presentation after, after this event. But here is the main differences between eBay and between Amazon. So Amazon is for these guys who manufacture their own product. eBay is much more for resellers, even if you, if you start with that. You know Etsy? You know that marketplace? Raise your hands. Okay, great. So basic rules, you know. You're buying from a person with stories, not, 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 it's not so pressure for price. You're buying some original products from people with stories. Another huge segment of um, multi-channel, as I mentioned, is a, is a social commerce. And I believe, honestly, it's a, it's a future, because you can see. I see the same picture behind me, so thanks. And uh, the reason is here. Because now, well, in 2015, represent more than 5% of online retail 
the social, social, social commerce, and it was like $40 billion. It's a huge number, and it's just 5%. And 80%, more than 80% of uh, all these orders were from Facebook. So Facebook is number one you know, platform in social commerce. But there's another huge player and it's Pinterest because 90, 93% users are, use the platform for research purchases. So how to use Facebook for your business? The first option is Facebook store. For you, it's easy, you just open your store on Facebook and you can use all the users as another, another, another big market. For example, Shopify as a platform, they, have, they, they launched a brand new you know, feature that you, you, have, you, you have Shopify store and it, in a few clicks you can open your own Facebook store and the connectivity between the Shopify and the Facebook is 100%, so you don't have to think about inventory management and so on. You just open another store and you have another one billion people market. Another, and I think this is more, more interesting than store, is a marketplace. I, I believe you know of, no, every one of you knows that Facebook you know, is like, it's like huge, huge marketplace because, for example, moms with kids, they're using it all the time. You know? We have kids at home, they're sleeping, so I'm going to Facebook. I want to I sell or buy some clothes you know, some, and anything else. So it's a huge opportunity for, for, let's say, products and services for moms and for these groups because you open a group, and you put them their products, and everything else is on Facebook. You know that? Ever seen that? You know, Facebook launched it a few months ago, I think. And this is the this is the another huge segment of social commerce. It's a conversational commerce, and I believe this is another huge channel. Uh, especially thanks Messenger and WhatsApp, and these two numbers are huge you know, about users. And I will show you again, it looks like this, you know? So you will sell the product, not only the customer care, especially, you can sell the product directly for uh, why I'm a Messenger, you know? It could be like automatic boots, or there could be sitting the real person, but it's not only about, you know, chatting. As you can see, you can offer, you know, some tickets directly for them, and they can buy it and pay it via Facebook you know, payment gate or via Apple Pay directly for Messenger. So it's another huge opportunity for social. And the second big player, as I mentioned, is the Pinterest. You know, Pinterest is, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of people use it for inspiration, for finding new design, finding new products. So they, they see the photos, they see the stories, and so on. So Pinterest, but Pinterest, you know, switch it to the e-commerce e -commerce platforms when they launch it, buy it button. So it's, it's very easy because you, you, you're searching the new inspiration, you can see some, you know, let's say, clothes or some, you know, new, new design something, item or something like that. And it's very easy to click on that and to buy it button and it, they will, you know, switch you to some store and you can buy it. So this is another e-commerce channel. And for example, as I mentioned, Shopify, they have connectors to Facebook. They have also connecting connections to Pinterest. Okay, and data. As I mentioned, data, or let's say, if you don't have a data, you're blind. Because I believe that in the next five or 10 years, you will have to use all of these channels that I'll show you, and mu much more, because you know, every, every two or three years, Facebook or any other big player launching something new, and they, they, they will use it also for e-commerce. But if you have a data from all of these channels, you, you can't, you know, you're not able to work in data, you're blind. And that, so that's what we do. So how to work, a few tips, how to work with data from, uh, in multi-channel multi sales. Uh, so first of all, please, you, have to, you need to have data from all of these channels, not only from the store and Facebook and, or, or two or three channels, you have to need data from all these channels. And then you have to compare the data because there are big differences between products uh, and let's say preferences people uh, uh, on Facebook and on Amazon. So I believe, not I believe, I know it, if you start to sell your products on Facebook, let's say Facebook, Amazon in your store, the results will be totally different in, in, in terms of the products popularity, which products are more popular on Amazon or, or online store. So you need to, need to compare it, okay? And then you will be able to, uh, to, you know, in your customer service and, 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 or let's say logistics, to be able to 
selling the products much easier on Facebook, on Amazon. Here are a few, you know, important KPIs, which are really, you know, let's say crucial to watch it uh, every minute, every second, every day. So revenue, you know, best-selling products, expedition time, prices across the channels, information for marketing, like cost per acquisition, cost per click, and customer lifetime value, and especially markets, and, marketing, and, and which marketing channels are top in every single country, because if you will use the multi-channel sales, it's 100% you know, uh, for sure that you will be international. And, and I'm from Czech Republic, and I know there's a first main mistake where when online stores want to expand to another country, they thought that they will use, when they will use the same marketing channels, they will be successful, let's say in Germany and the UK. And it's totally wrong. So when you will check all these data, and we will start to use Amazon for expansion, you will analyze the data, what kind of products people, let's say in the UK, are, are prefer, or in Germany, you'll be much more successful when, in the second step, so when you will launch your store in that country. How to use data for growing? As I mentioned, compare data, measure the dependen dependencies and correlations. Super, super crucial to see you know, the story in the data, because it's not so hard. Everyone hates data. Actually, I, I hate data. You know, I have data analytics company, but I hate data because I'm lazy. So that's the reason why I have the company. So use these tools for helping analyzing data, and but see see the story in data. Watch the most important KPIs, and don't fear the numbers, and make conclusions. So if you see the problem, do some do something. Just do something. Okay. So that's all. And as I mentioned, we want to help you with data. So here's my special discount for you. If you will tweet Love Monkey Data, we'll give you 20% discount. So I think it's a good deal. And if you want to see uh, or meet our people, as I mentioned, we got a booth at C8. And so thank you. So. Thanks. So some questions or? Um, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very nice. Um, I'd like to. Uh, can you hear me there? Yeah. Uh, there. Okay. Thanks. Um, so the question is: uh, well, You talked about different marketing channels, but what about, um, or how would you decide which of these channels? Because you talked about testing or trying different types of uh, channels, giving a chance to each one. How would you decide which channel is the best? Let's say. Because normally, if you have many, you have to let a time for those channels to run. So maybe, how long would you leave those channels running? How would you decide which one performs better than the other one? Because maybe all of the channels have different times to, to perform and different uh, results after the same time. Yeah. Thank you. Did everyone hear? Is the question clear? Okay, thank you for the question. So the question was how to choose the right sales channel. That was the question. How to decide which one? Yeah, so as I mentioned, the first step, you have to make a research, you know, if your product is ready for which channel. As I mentioned, if, if for example, I have a product that which you have a big margin, you can, you can, you can compare with your, uh, you can uh, compete with your, with your competitors via price, Amazon is okay for you. If not, if you have some really special, product with really low margin, probably Amazon will not be so interesting for you and you will use, for example, the eBay. So I think the answer is you have to, first you have to make a research, compare your products, your services and what kind of, uh, and, and, and let some rules of it, all these marketing channels and the, res and the result will be okay from these five, I can use these two because that makes sense. And after that, then you will, then you have to, you have to try it. And we will try it. I believe after, let's say, three months, you will have enough data for making another decision. Hello. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, you have mentioned all these um, different marketplaces, and I'm just wondering um, why you have excluded Google Shopping, because I think that's a big and upcoming, well, it's currently a big um, marketplace at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. It's a very, very good question because, and the answer is very simple. I have no time to talk about another marketplace, so I just choose these three because they are two of them are really famous, and Etsy is really some kind of interesting. But definitely, you're right. You know, Google Shopping is 
is, is, is another, let's say, channel, a big channel for, for selling your products. And uh, so the answer is, I'm sorry, I have no time, but <laughs> it's a very, very important to try it.